Uh, first of all, I want to thank Dr. Dr. Jackson and uh, Pastor Thomas for this opportunity. Uh, we met maybe about a month ago, and I just shared with, with him my, um, my passion to give back. In this business that, that I'm in, everybody take, right? We, we, we're takers, you know, we take the fan, uh, we, we take things, the, the contracts, and we take, 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 but I want to find myself, I want to be in a position to have significant success. People look at what I've done and man, you're so successful, but how significant is it? And so uh, Dr. Jackson and uh, Pastor Thomas has given me this opportunity. So they've asked me, they asked me to talk about greatness, right? Greatness and, and how important that, that word is uh, for me throughout my journey. So according to, to Webster, the definition of greatness is the quality or state of being great, as in size, skill, power, or achievement. I was always told that you can't define a word with the word, so my teacher from like third grade would definitely disagree with this particular uh, definition, but <laughs> the quality or state of being great as in size, skill, power, or achievement. I literally read that maybe 10 to 15 times. And what word that stood, the word that stood out was achievement. Achievement, why? It signifies effort, Commitment and sacrifice. Every single achievement I've experienced required those traits. So, so to me, greatness is a never-ending journey. Right? When we think of greatness, we think of in sports, the Michael Jordans, the LeBrons, we think of different, different uh, um, actors, we think of the best. But it's a never-ending journey. And you, can be, and you can experience greatness in so many different parts of your um, life. So, uh, I've, been, I've been very, very blessed to uh, experience greatnesses throughout my life. Uh, I remember the first time. I was in second grade. And so, well, first of all, growing up, I stuttered really bad. I'm talking about really bad. I couldn't go up in, in, in front of the, the class and read. I would get sweaty palms. I would just say no. I would get in trouble because, I, because of my speech impediment. And I asked my grandmother, why God chose me to stutter? Like... I don't like it. And she said, and she said the most, now looking back on it, she said the, the best thing for a five-year-old. She said, was, uh, uh, Todd, that, that's just a way of God reminding you how special you are. I'm like, whoa. <laughs> that's just God's way of reminding you how special you are. So now every time I stutter, I'm like, thank you, God. And so during this conversation, if I get stuck on, if I get stuck on, on, on a word, I'm going to do that. It's not because I'm whatever, I'm crazy. I'm just thanking God. And if I really get stuck on the word, that's God really like saying, Ty, go. So I may, I may even give him, give him five. <laughs> so so, so, um, so uh, um, I entered this, this speech impediment class. And one thing my teacher told me that stuck with me is everybody got something. I said, well, my, people can hear mine. I, don't want, I want something, but not that. Right? But everybody got something. And when she told me that, it really opened my eyes to nobody's perfect. And so that started my journey to greatness. And so when she, she said, when you get stuck on a word, slow down and breathe. Right? And so if you, if you don't stutter, stuttering is like, remember when well, you guys are young, but growing up, I watched Sesame Street. Do you guys still watch Sesame Street? You do? Okay, good. Thank you. So during the singing part, there's a ball that bounces over the words, right? And in my mind, that ball gets stuck there. And mentally, I even stutter. So if the word that bothers me is black, I can say this pen is, and that ball gets stuck. So people who stutter have a ton of synonyms. You guys grew up on Porky Pig? No? My, my older people? Porky Pig, so he would get stuck, but 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 dark, right? So that's 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 how it is for us, and so uh, uh, so the next three years, I understood that nobody's perfect and everybody got something, and I always remember that's just God telling you how 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 special you are, right? Now don't laugh if I keep doing this, okay? That kind of messes up my anyway. So 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 by um, fifth grade. I graduated uh, 
that my speech impediment class and I learned to control my breathing, slow down and breathe through the words. And that's when I first experienced greatness. And that feeling was so addicting. I wanted more, right? I wanted to feel that feeling as much as I possibly can. So let's, so let's fast forward to um, high school. I went to Dallas Carter. Uh, it's, a, it's a real big uh, sports, sports school, right? They had a movie about us, all these different things. You guys seen Friday, Friday Night Lights? Yeah. So that was my school that beat Odessa team. So like we were really good in sports. We were ranked nationally in, in, in basketball, but I was the guy who came off the bench. I was the, the, the I had this head with this body. <laughs> yeah, so I was good, but I wasn't great, right? And, but I worked hard. I was the kid who was there early, who was late, and like Ty worked so hard, but he just don't get it. He just don't have it. So by my senior year, we was ranked second nationally. We wound up doing a um, phenomenal job. I get a scholarship. Lo and behold, I get a scholarship. I was so excited. Most of my, most of my uh, t- uh, teammates went to these, these really big schools. Uh, I went to Southern Nazarene University, a small NAIA school with a, with a class 2,000, 2,500 maybe. Oh, I'm sorry, really? <laughs> so you guys feel, feel, feel it, right? And so I, I, I go there. And nobody never plays pro basketball from that school. So I didn't have any pro as, as aspirations, but the one thing I did know that nobody from my family ever graduated college. So that was my journey. That's when my journey began. I wanted to be great and graduate college. So let's fast forward to my senior year. I got a little bit bigger, I started jumping a little bit higher, and basketball-wise, I wound up being first-team All-American, led the nation in scoring, and, uh, and, and also a player of the year. But one of my greatest accomplishments by the end of my senior year, I had uh, graduated with my bachelor's degree in sports management and my master's degree in education. And that was my, my second great, uh, the second time I felt greatness. When I tell you to see my parents' excitement that all the work that they put in, all the time they told me no, and to, and to look back and see where I came from, skinny kid that couldn't even get in front of the class, to now graduate with this. And back then, they associated stuttering with uh, you being stupid because I didn't talk, or, or that I'm autistic, not knowing that I, I know the answer, I'm just afraid to say it, right? I was afraid of the ridicule. I was afraid of being picked on. And so when they told me to come up here, I would say no, right? And I think that's how life is. We know the answer. We know what's right. When God put these opportunities in your life, right, as obstacles, either they can be a hurdle or a crutch. What's the difference? Right? Have you guys ever, re- any track athletes in here? I can't see. I see one, a, a couple, okay. And so I ran track for literally two hours. <laughs> literally for two hours, right? And so I wanna race. That's my thing, I'm fast, I wanna race. No, nah. you gotta do the technique, you gotta do this, you gotta do that. I'm like, no, where's the gun, where's the line, and let's go. Right? And so, and so I was watching the, I was watching the hurdlers run. And if you never jumped over a hurdle, it's so awesome. This is the hurdle, and they put their first leg about this far over that first hurdle. So I tried to do it, and when I got to the hurdle, I galloped like a, like a gazelle, <laughs> right? Because I was afraid of my heel hitting that hurdle and me tumbling over. So just imagine the mental fortitude you have to have to see this obstacle, keep your stride, and get over that thing, right? And so when I'm talking to, when I'm talking to, to students, I ask them, the things that's in your life, is it a hurdle or are you going to use it as a crutch? How many of y'all have been on crutches? Woohoo! Anybody? I can't see out there. Okay, can you run uh, if, you, if you have crutches? 
You can try, but, it, but it, it's, it's, it's not that good, right? So just imagine a, uh, an issue in your life. Is it a hurdle? Or will you use it as a crutch? Because if it's a hurdle, I can keep my flow. I can keep it going, right? And so when, when not if, but when things come up, use, them as, use that or look at it as a, as a hurdle. You can only have two, two crutches, right? Eventually, you got to get, 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 get rid of one, and now you're limping a little bit better, right? And the obstacle is to get rid of that crutch, get out of that boot, and use that obstacle as a, as a hurdle. So uh, we're now at this point, I'm a senior, in, I'm a senior in, in college. I had all these accolades, but it's at a small school, right? So the NBA has this thing called the PIT. It's a Portsmouth Invitational Tournament. And what it is, is they invite the seniors from these schools to play in front of scouts who didn't get enough playing time. And so I called the, the NBA office and I asked them, could I be invited? Could I play? Gracefully and professionally, they said, your school is too small. Even though you have great numbers, your competition was weak. I had, a, I had an opportunity right there. Is it a hurdle or obstacle? So what I did was, okay, I cleaned garages. <laughs> I mowed grass. I did everything I could to raise money to buy my own ticket to Virginia. I went out there with a backpack full of tapes bios and, and one suit. Do you guys know what VHS tapes are? Yeah. You do? Okay. No, so no DVD. DVDs wasn't invented yet. I'm aging myself a little bit. That's okay. But a backpack for the tapes and, and the way the gym is set up, this is the court, fans, 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 and this is all NBA personnel. I sat right here. So if they had to go to the restroom, take a break or leave, they would pass me. Now, mind you, the games were going on, and I'm sitting right there. How you doing? I'm Ty Ellis. I was invited to this uh, um, tournament, but I know I can play. How you doing? I'm Ty Ellis. I was invited. I said that 80 to 100 times that entire week. At the end, by, by Friday, I am upset. I'm extremely mad because I know I can play at this level, and they didn't give me the opportunity. They didn't, give, they didn't give me the opportunity to play professional basketball, change, the, change my life, right? I was so mad, I walked to the local Y, and Miss Kupchak is there. If you guys don't know who that is, he's like a 6'10". Um, he was the former president and, and GM of the Lakers at that time. Now he works for the Charlotte Bobcats, Charlotte Hornets. He's 6'10" with a stoic face, he's a, he was a mean guy back in the day, and he's on the elliptical. So now he's 7'2", right? I see this guy, and I'm, I'm low-key stalking him. Let's not, like, I'm really stalking this guy. He's, he, he's on, he has his headphones on, and I walk in, and I see him, and I kinda, kinda, okay, here's my chance. And all those things start coming up. Ty, you stuttering. Ty, you study, you gotta, it's, a, it's like a 30 second clip. And if you guys know, you, you don't like being interrupted while you're working out, especially on, a, on, on the elliptical. For me, I will literally bang my knees and fall off the elliptical if somebody wanna talk to me. So I have all these things going, go, going through my mind. I even came up with a scenario, I'm gonna wait until he, 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 he gets off, like walking, oh hey, the whole acting thing, right? I said, no, that's, that's, that's not gonna work. Now, mind you, time is going. I said, you know what, God, this is God right now. What, what are the chances I walk to, to the local Y, seven in the morning, a GM from the Los Angeles Lakers is there. This is God. This is God right now. I, I, I went over there, I introduced myself. He takes me to the, the uh, gym part of the Y. Works me out, he runs me for 30 minutes literally runs me for 30 minutes. Literally sprints, suicides. He was trying to break my will. He was trying to see how serious I was, right? So God blessed me with that opportunity. But if I didn't work before the opportunity came, I wouldn't have been ready. Your opportunity will come, I promise you. But, the, but where, where you at now is purposeful. Use it.
Do not abuse your, your time. That's the one thing you can't get back. You can't get tomorrow and you can't get yesterday. Right? So use your time now. So he, he takes me uh, in there and he, he runs me maybe like five minutes of shots, dunks, things of that nature. Two weeks later, he invites me to play for the Lakers Summer League team. And that's how my pro career started. Right? When they told me no, I could have said, nah, okay, well, I'm going to just get a job. No. You don't control what God has told me. God told me this would happen, and it's not my job to figure out who, who, which person passed. I'm across the logistics. It's my job to be ready and, and, and believe. Right. Thank you. <laughs> All right, so... Um, so, so there's, there's, there's something that, that I talk with my, my team about, and it's called flow, right? So with my speech impediment, my teacher told me, you have to keep your flow. Just slow down and breathe. That way your flow will continue, right? Don't hold your breath and try to hold it and talk and don't respect the, the stutter, Right? So the same thing goes with, with, with you guys. When you guys have these opportunities to, to, to hold your breath and get frustrated and just try to just rush through things, take your time and breathe to keep your flow of life. Right? So flow. For me, flow means focus, learn, ownership, and work on you. Focus. Focus on, focus on your goal. Be consistent and committed to achieve greatness. Being great must be a lifestyle, right? I'm up and down in my weight right now. As a player, I was this 190 physically fit guy, and now it's just like straight down. Like water goes straight down. There is no, no, right? I don't know what's going on, but <laughs> the thing is, uh, um, it's, a, it's a lifestyle. It really is. Every day you wake up, focus on being great. Right? If you want to lose weight, you have to change your diet, your habits, all of, all, all of those things. It's a it's lifestyle. Learn. Learn to be honest with yourself about yourself. Create great habits and erase, and erase the bad habits. Bad habits literally keep you from being the best person you can be. Think about it. Learn to be honest with yourself about yourself. How often can you... Have you looked in the mirror and said, you know what, I'm not good at this, this, this? If you have it, you're cheating yourself. Because you can't improve if you don't be honest with yourself. And that's the hardest thing in my particular business that I try to preach to my players. They all think they know. And they, and they look at me, I, I, I had one player call me a hater. What am I hating on? I want to win just as, just as bad as you want to win. Right, but if I tell you something that you need to know, you should be thankful. Because in this business or in life, people will t the people who tell you what you need to know, bless them. Otherwise, people are talking about you and not talking to you, right? And so be that person to, to, to accept it. Ownership, own your mistakes, own them, right? When I'm, uh, my, my wife and I talk to different couples, Right? And my wife says, you have to own your ugly. Own it. Everybody has ugly ways. Right? Everybody has things that I'm not too proud about. Own it. Own your ugly. Right? Um, ownership. Take, re take responsibility for your actions and reactions. Ownership is the key to accountability. So when I was in Phoenix, uh, I was assigned, I won't say his name, uh, but I was assigned to a, a high draft pick. Very, very good at the, I'm going to say this college, you guys would figure it out. He was very good in college, uh, but he was always worried about things he had no control over. When, when, when Jay Toronto took him out, he would say, well, Devin Booker did this, or Tyson Chandler did that. Oh, but what are you doing? What are you doing? You have to own your own mistakes, man. Right, and so in this business, uh, we, we, we find them. They find them. But if you're finding a guy that literally has $5 million of liquid cash, $2,000 for doing this, $2,000, he don't care about that. This dude has $2,000 pair of shoes on right now. 
right? So I, I challenged the organization, let's teach him the power of ownership. There's power in ownership. There's power in discipline, right? I can't hold you accountable until you, you know what? I did that. And once you own that, now we're taking those, those progressive steps to being accountable. Now we're taking those steps uh, to greatness. So I encourage you all at this young of, of an age, embrace it. Ownership, O-W-N, right? If you embrace ownership, others will notice. That's the key about we want to be noticed, especially in, in, in this world, right? With the uh, Instagrams, the social media, all this stuff. We do it, it's a, it's a highlight tape. We want to get recognized. But if you focus on owning what you have control over, others will notice, right? So, and, and W, work on you. The, uh, <laughs> when I'm talking to my players, I tell them it's a prerequisite to, to work hard. If you want to play pro ball, if you want to be a doctor, whatever your degree in, working hard is a prerequisite. It's just, just, just you just have to do it. But I, but work on you. What, are you. what do you need to work on, right? For me is not screaming so much in the games, but just talking to them. That's what I have to work on, right? So today in practice, I'm gonna start that journey, right? God told me that I'm gonna be an NBA head coach. He told me that five years ago. So that's already in the making. It's just my job to work on me and be great every single day. Right, so this morning, I woke up, I read my devotion, and I started that path of being great, right? It's 10, 11, I have a lot, I have a lot of time to, to continue that journey of being great today. There's nothing will keep me from being great today, right? So I'm gonna tell you guys a story about uh, my son. So my son, uh, uh, he, when, whenever I take him swimming, he just jumps, he, he just jumps in the pool. I guess y'all do too. <laughs> so, but it's cold. For me, it's cold. I just can't, I have to ease my way in, right? But he's so committed to swimming and having fun, he don't care about how cold it is. And, 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 and he told me something so profound. He said, that it only hurts for a minute. Wow, I'm like, <laughs> right? It only hurts for, for, for a minute. And after that, you can have fun. But he is fully committed to swimming. So greatness is the same exact thing. If you're fully committed to being great, jump in. Don't be like me, because if, if I tiptoe down those steps and that water get around my knees, I always have the opportunity to, to uh, get out. But if I fully just jump in, I'm in it. And there is no turning back. So whatever you want to be, who, who, what, whatever you want to be, who, whoever you admire, ask them what got them there. And I promise, I promise you they're going to say, I fully committed. Every day I work towards that particular goal. Right? So I uh, encourage you guys to, to, to work on you. There's a story that uh, I, I heard my wife say, and I uh, uh, apply it to uh, my journey, my life. She asked my son, how much do you love me? No, she said, son, I love you. And she, my, my, my son said, I, I love you too, mommy. How much? And my son says, how much? This much. And she said, no, I want you to love me like this. What's the difference? Don't make me cry. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and she said, and, 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 she, and she does this. And he says, well, mommy, what's the difference? The difference is, look at how much room that anything can get in between this, right? There's nothing that, that, that can get in between this, right? So this is how our love for God should be because the world wants, wants us to love him like this, right? The world will, and now look at all of this opportunity for the, for, for the world to attack us. But I challenge you to love God like this. And if you love God like this, you will love being great like this even more. Because now he's giving you the tools for this. Right? He's giving you the mindset for this. Right? So every single day, be purposeful. 
Your actions are purposeful and your thoughts are intentional. Right? I can't see out here, but how, show, show, show me of, of hands who, can, who talk to themselves. Do, do, do any of you guys talk to yourself? <laughs> all right, I see a couple. All right, all right, all right. All right, how about this? For, for those who didn't raise your hand, do you motivate yourself verbally? Those who didn't raise your hand? So a couple of y'all guys raise your hand up, but that's talking to yourself if you didn't recognize. It's the same exact thing, right? And so for me, I would rather talk to myself than listen to my thoughts. If I listen to, I can literally pray right now, but if I watch LeBron James dunk, that image is in my mind. So I just know how I work. I know me. Right, so I would much rather pray out loud. I would much rather sing the song out loud because I'm protecting what's mine. And, so, and if I don't subconsciously, I will start thinking about other things that I have. Like, what do you think about that? Right, so, so those, those are a, a couple of tools. I, I encourage you guys to love like this and not like this. I encourage you guys to own your ugly, whatever that is. Own it, embrace it, and work towards, towards, towards changing it. And last but not least, I, um, I, I want to thank you guys. This is such a, I'm really honored to be here, to be honest with you. Uh, I've been talking with, with, with Herman for about, oh, Herman and I, we have a group of guys that meet every Wednesday at 545 a.m. And we talk about our week, we talk about the God, and we just encourage each other. And Herman is like, I don't know, the socialite of Rockland, Roseville area. He knows everybody. So he is consistently putting me in, in, in front of people that I can share my message. And thank you very much. I don't take this for granted. I don't take your time for granted. I know how chapel is. I've been there. And I'm not proud of the times I've, I've skipped it or tried to fin finagle my way in and out. But I do thank you guys for your attention. And uh, hopefully I look forward to uh, our paths crossing again. Thank you very much.